that's what we think here today. Uh, we're going to do a musculoskeletal exam on them, all right? So if I could get you ready, if I can get you to remove your socks and shoes and your t-shirt, I'm going to wash up the clothes. Come on over. So, how's it going? Feel pretty good. Anything you need going on in? The weather's hot. Any problems, injuries? Nope. Been all right? Didn't hurt anything? I know you're a professional athlete. Yeah. You have bad cash. You didn't break anything, did you? Not yet. Thank goodness. We're going to let that happen. The patient is in no acute distress or uh, discomfort. He's alert and he's oriented, right? He's at this appointment and he's not trying to get his tires rotated at the doctor's office. We're going to start with the upper extremities. And that's item number 24. So we're going to inspect soft tissue and joint alignment. We're checking shoulders, elbows, wrists, fingers, um, that they're symmetrical, they're aligned without any atrophy. So, you know, there shouldn't be shoulder tilt. There shouldn't be a trophic muscle on one side and not the other, right? Symmetry, wrists, fingers, right? They're all symmetrical. There's no swelling or discoloration. Bony and soft tissue palpation, we're going to blend those together. And the way that works is we start out with some of the bony stuff. Um, we're palpating over the stomach-clavicular joint, right? The clavicles, the AC joint, right, as we move out. Right? The scapula, the deltoids, the bicipital groove, triceps, biceps, the olecranon, the medial and lateral epicondyles, the flexors and extensions of the forearm, the carpal bones of the wrist, the metacarpal bones in the hand, the proximal and the distal interphalangeal joints. Now on the palmar side is the thenar and the hypothenar eminence. Right? And when we're finished palpating both of those, we blend this section together, 25. So there's no swelling, bogginess, heat, or tenderness over <coughs> joints, bony prominences. The muscle tone is symmetrical without spasm. The shoulder range of motion. Right? This is where we just instruct our patient to follow us, is all we're wanting to do. Right? So I'm just going to tell the patient, I want you to follow me and do exactly as I do. Right? So arms up. What are we testing here? Flexion. And then we bring it down behind us. Extension. Extension, right? And then we bring it together and we cross in the front. Abduction. Abduction. Palms together, abduction, right? And then I'm going to tell you to free each other rest. Rotation. Now I got the cuts on you and into Internal. the car you go. Internal. Internal rotation, right? So that is my active range of motion for my patient, right? He's actively doing it himself. Then I'm also putting through elbow range of motion, right? So elbows follow me. Flexion. Extension. Then I'm going to have him rotate his palms down. Rotation. Rotation. Then I'm going to have him bring his wrists up into this position. Flexion. 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 Extension. Extension. Radial. Deviation, palmar deviation, right? Fingers open. Abduction. Abduction. Fist together. Adduction. Adduction. Thumb range of motion. This is going to come to across the midline. Across the midline, right? The midline of my palm is my midline, right? I bring it across. Adduction. Abduction of the thumb. Flexion, extension, right? Opposition of fingers to all thumbs. Thumbs to all fingers, I should say. Finger to all thumbs, that'd be weird. <laughs> Annual muscle strength testing, right? Uh, we're going to report all these as 5 over 5, even though some of them are 4 over 5. We're going to call it all 5 over 5. So with this one, first off we're going to do, this is done bilaterally. Flexion and extension we're going to do bilaterally. In this plane here, hold it right there. Now don't let me push you down. Good. Now push him down. He's pushing this way. What are we testing here? If I'm up here, which way am I testing? Flexion. Flexion. It's five over five there, right? And then I'm going to have him make elbows to your side, just like so. Push against me. Abduction. We agree. Mm -hmm. And on the inside. 
Hey deduction, absolutely. Now we're going to do shoulder rotation, internal external rotation. All right, he's in a stop sign position, stabilize his elbow. I'm going to put my hand on this side of his wrist. I want you to push against me. Where's he going? Keep pushing slow. Where's he going? Internal. That's an internal rotation. I'm going to switch my hands, the old dancing hand trick. Push. External. That's an external rotation, right? We're going to do it on both sides. So you guys can see this side. Push against me. External. external. Internal rotation. Okay. The elbow. So first off, I'm going to put him in this position here. Make a big muscle for me. I'm, I'm grabbing below the joint. I'm not grabbing the hand, right? I'm grabbing below the joint, isolating the elbow. Now resist me. Don't let me pull you down. I'm pointing against him. What is he trying to do? He's trying to flex. I know you can't see on that side, but he's trying to flex, right? Then I'm going to switch my hand to this side and I'll push against me. Now it's extension, right? Then I'm going to have. I'm going to go to this side. Big muscle. I'm going to pull you down. Now push at me, push me down. There you go. Then I'm going to rotate to this hand. I'm doing what? Supination, pronation. I like to grab the lateral medial epicondyle when I do this, right? To listen to see if I have some tendonitis. I'm going to have you grab my hand in a handshake. I want you to rotate in. I'm going to rotate out. Ready? Go. What is this? Pronation. Pronation. He's proning out the soup, right? Now I'm going to rotate him out the opposite way. Now he's going into a supination right same thing on this side right and then opposite and then I'm gonna go right into the wrist what is he here stay right there extension of the wrist I'm rotating around hold it right there notice where I'm grabbing I'm not grabbing over the digits right try to keep it up this is not a good test no so I need to grab below that joint of the meta, uh, metacarpal phalanges, grab below and I'm going to try to pull it down, right? Same thing on this side, we're at, I want you to look right here, hold it right there. Extension, Extension. spin him around, and you have your hand, Relax. hold it right there. Flexion. Flexion, okay, things. Open your fingers wide, right? I'm going to try to close his fingers. Keep them open, don't let me squeeze them. What is this? Abduction. Abduction, yes. Fingers go inside, open. Now try to close. Abduction. Try to close, try to close. Abduction. Abduction. Rings, don't let me break the rings. Don't let me break them. Intrinsics, right, intrinsics. Now squeeze my fingers. Squeeze tight, 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 tight. And I'm trying to pull them. Good, so now the hands are done. So the upper extremity, so when we talk about inspection, we're gonna do this lay on back. So this is the inspection, right? So we have to inspect, we're inspecting soft tissue and joint alignment. We're looking at the hips, the knees should be aligned, the malleola should be aligned, the feet should be aligned. We're looking at alignment. Um, we're looking for um, hips, knees, and toes are symmetrically aligned without atrophy, deformities, uh, fasciculations or tremors and there's no swelling, there's no discoloration. The palpation, again, we're going to combine bony palpation with soft tissue and we're going to palpate the iliac crests, right? The greater trochanters of the femur. Um, we're going to palpate the gastrox or the vastus lateralis and medialis muscle groups, right? Then we're going to do the suprapatellar pouches. The patellar pouches, right? We talked about the concave stuff around the knees, right? There shouldn't be fluid collections here. Then we're going to do the patellar tendon, the tibial tuberosity is that funny little bone, anterior tibialis, the popliteal fossa, right, we're looking for cysts or effusions. Then we come down to the lateral and medial malleolus, right, Achilles tendon. There is the uh, tarsal bones, the metatarsal, we'll put a little pressure here, see if there's any tenderness across the third and fourth metatarsal for like a neuroma. And then there's the toes, right? The proximal and the distal phalanx, um, joints of the toes, right? Uh, and then we'll just say that there is no swelling, bogginess, heat, or tenderness over joints, and bony prominences, uh, no discoloration, fasciculations, 
um, or tremors. I want you to take your, your both hands and bring your right knee to your chest. Very good. Now do the other side. And hold that. What have we done here? What movement is this? I have what here in the hip? And also have knee flexion. Active, passive, or what are we talking about? Passive. It's active radio motion, so I've done the knee and the hip and flexion. I take over here because patients don't know what internal hip rotation is. So I take over here and I rotate his knee. No, no resistance. It's a nice, just a simple, I'm feeling for any crepitus in that. It's internal and external rotation of the hip. Again, internal and external rotation of the hip. Right? That's all I've done. Good. Now, I want to test AV deduction. I want to place my hand on the side that I'm going to test. I want you to take this leg and cross over the other leg. Good. Now bring it back out. I want you to swing out and hit my hand with the same leg. Come on out. Good. So what is this? It came out. And when it came across? Adduction. Swap my hand. Same thing. I want you to cross over your leg. Good. And now I want you to swing out. And then back to the middle. Right? Still all active range of motion. We're going to do an active range of motion. All I'm going to ask my patient to do is just to move his feet in concentric circles, right? So just kind of take your toes, kind of rotate them around. So what do you, what's going on here when he does that? Keep going. Well, slow motion, reverse flexion, inversion, plantar flexion, eversion. So that's our active range of motion, right? Then we're going to passively take his ankles through a range of motion, right? We're going to evaluate the tibiotalar. The tibiotalar is just by dorsal flexing and plantar flexing his foot. Not with resistance, I'm doing it for him. Both sides. Dorsal flex, plantar flex. And then I'm going to evaluate the subtalar, which is grabbing his ankle and the calcaneus with the other hand, and I'm inverting and everting the calcaneus. Right? This is called the subtalar, right? testing the medial and lateral tendons right, of the ankle. And then I have the trans transverse tarsal joints, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to grab the distal portion or his forefoot, and I'm going to rotate him through, and it's the anterior tendons. So that is my transverse tarsal joints bilaterally, right? So for our manual muscle, we're going to go ahead and do our hip, get back into the hip. I'm going to isolate this side. I want you to raise this hip up. Hold it right there. Don't let me push it down. What am I testing? This is hip, flexion, manual muscle strength test. Come around to this side. Same thing, raise it up, hold it. Right, that's all I'm doing, I'm putting a little pressure there, right? This is going to be hip extension, right, in this position. I'm gonna test him actively first, and then I'm gonna manual muscle strength test them. So I want you to raise this leg up, hold it right there, don't let me push it down. Good. Now I'm going to change my hand to the other, other side, bring it up, hold it there, don't let me push it down, now push down. All right? So I've done active and I've done manual, manual muscle strength in this thing. Then I'm going to come to the front, I'm going to try to push your knees together, don't let me push them together. Right? He's resisting, so what is he doing here? Abduction. Abduction. And then here? Abduction. Add. He's coming together, he's resisting here. Abduction. I'm having my hand here, I'm going to apply pressure on this side, and I'm going to have him resist this hand. Okay? He's external, he's trying to rotate which way? He's trying to push against his hand. He's positioned externally, but he's trying to rotate internally. Right? And then the old hand, dancing hand trick, I go this way, it comes out, and I push this way. External. Right. Same thing on this side. Push. Push. Right? So that's my hip. So I've done A, B, and A deduction of the hip, internal, external rotation, right? And now I'm going to go right into the knee. I'm going to have him, you know, the leg machines at the gym, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to have him pull against me. I've got my hand on his knee, pull against me. So now he's trying to flexion, push against me. Again, flexion and extension. Okay? And then for the ankle, I want you to push down like a gas pedal and pull your toes up. Gas pedal, 
and pull your toes up. Push against my hand. Just push against my hand. Inversion. Inversion. Push against my hand. Against my hand. Push against my hand. Big toe. Push down. Yep. Lift up. Push down. Lift up. All the lesser toes. Lift up. Push down. Push down. Lift up. Then we would say that uh, manual muscle strength is five over five, right? This is a part of the neuro test, actually. We're testing for something called clonus. It has to do with a spinal cord injury or, or some, some kind of deficit in the cord. This is called clonus. Clonus is where we take the foot and we rapidly dorsiflex it and let it go. Dorsiflex and let it go. If he had clonus, the gastroc, the innervation from the spinal cord into the gastroc would cause the foot to do this crazy looking thing here. It would go like this. Boom, 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 boom. boom. Right? That is clonus. That is the how many beats of clonus. Five or less is a normal finding. I've never seen it ever in a normal, you know, anyone with a normal clonus, but you could have five. But an abnormal pathology would be beating of the foot like this. Okay? I'm going to test both sides. Again, it's a dorsiflexion and let it go. Make sure he's nice and loose. Relax. That's it. Positive clonus, boom, 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 boom. Okay. No clonus present. We skip 40, that's deep tendon reflex the cerebellar that's coming on Monday. We go right to the spine. In this exam, it's a standard position. We're going to inspect um, the soft tissue and joint alignment. Again, we're looking for shoulder tilts. We're looking for hip tilts, right, which suggests that there's some scoliosis going on. Shoulder tilts. Um, we're looking for um, any curvature of the spine. We talked about lower doses this morning as well, or kyphosis of the thoracic spine we did this morning. The spine is without deformity. It's symmetry of the scapula and of the uh, shoulder. The iliac heights are equal. There's no muscle atrophy here, swelling, or discoloration. Bony and soft tissue palpation, we'll do it again together. It starts in the cervical spine. And I just kind of march my fingers right on down the spine. Right, right on down the spine. You need that tender? Nope. And I'm feeling for step offs. You're talking about step offs, even being subluxations or movements of the spine where they don't line up anymore. They could be out or they could be in or they could be left. So there's no subluxation of the spine. We're palpating the soft tissue of the spine, the muscles of the back, the trapezius. Uh, the latissimus, there's no tinnitus, no swelling or discoloration. And then we'll go through the spine range of motion. So in the spine range of motion, I know we've gone through the cervical spine range of motion, but we're going to do it again real quick. So chin to your chest, and then I want you to look all the way up as far back as you can. Right? Now I want you to look to the left, and look to your right. Right? Right ear on right shoulder, left ear on your left shoulder, right? full range of motion of the cervical spine. The thoracic spine, step forward a little bit. Thoracic and lumbar is tested together, but we're gonna do pretty much the same thing. I stand with my hands isolating his hips because I, on some of this stuff, I don't want him to use his, his waist or his hips. I want to see what the spine can do, okay? So first, I'm gonna have you take your hands and reach down and touch your toes, right? When this happens, that curvature of the lumbar spine should straighten out. And then look quickly to see if there's any curvature of the spine here. Okay, come on back. Now I want you to lay way back as far as you can. Extension, okay, forward again. Now I want you to look, uh, turn to your right. Notice I'm isolating his hip. If I'd let him, he would use his hip, right? I don't want to look at the hip, I want to look at the spine. Now I want you to look to the left, right? Now I want you to get a straight face forward again. Now take your right hand and run it down the outside of your right thigh as far as you can. Lateral bending into the opposite side. Lateral bending. Right? And that is the musculoskeletal exam.